Welcome back. So last time we went through kind of a high level of Venus operations and what does it mean to design, build, test, and fly. And on this deeper dive, I wanted to get into a little bit more of you know, the math you can see here to my left. And I had this diagram last time I put up of kind of thrust to weight and then wing loading and different curves and, and where, you know, how to help size and pick a, a vehicle. And so part of this deep dive, and this may take a couple different segments, I actually want to kind of complete the story of how we figure out you know, what speed, what altitude, what configuration, how we get some of that mission at a, at a math level, at a modeling level, then kind of picked out. And then you're going to hear from some of our experts who are actually doing this on, on a daily basis, of where, where we kind of start that portion before we then go into other aspects of you know, building, testing, and flying it. And so uh, the first thing we'll have to do, because there is going to be a little bit of math, but first this is just more flight vectors. In the past, we had just a very simple aircraft at cruise. And so lift opposed weight, thrust opposed drag. But we, we need to get a little bit more specific here. And so I've drawn with a simple aircraft first, I've actually drawn a couple of different things. And so the aircraft is an angle, so I've actually drawn it in a climb, right? So the angle with respect to the horizon, the velocity vector, it does have an upward segment. So when it's doing that, that's theta, the kind of angle with respect to the horizon. And so if theta is bigger than zero, it's in a climb, theta you know, could be in a dive, but there's gonna be a different angle. And so my weight is offset by that. Sorry, it, it, offset from an angle point of view is offset by that. The lift is still perpendicular to the aircraft. And then the, the drag is along that vector V. But the thrust, we could do a couple of different things. The thrust can actually be offset, uh, but also the wings could potentially be offset and, and the wing cord line. And so the angle of attack drawn here in green would be the angle that the wings are seeing uh, more than the velocity vector of the vehicle. So a you know, higher angle of attack would give you more lift. Okay? And then the thrust, we can actually have our, our engine at an angle as well that may be different than all of that. And so that's what the extra phi stands up for. And so uh, I went and wrote down the equation so I wouldn't sit in here forever sitting writing. And so if you look at the parallel direction, so along the vector v, you would then pick up the thrust. There's the cosine of the angle of attack and phi. That's again, the, the engine, um, most of the thrust because it's a cosine is gonna be going towards the, the parallel direction. And then you can look down here in the perpendicular direction, it picks up, the, the remainder might be opposing gravity. You have uh, minus the weight times sine of the theta because of the, the angle again with the vehicle to the horizon. And then I have drag, and I'm gonna split into two. This extra drag and then you know extra drag, if you will, residuals. That, that would be, you know, my gear is down, I've got flaps up. This is usually how, how it's written, just gotta kind of split it up separately than just a clean vehicle. And that's equal to the weight of gravity times acceleration or mass. And that's just the time rate of change with respect to time. Okay, and so then filling that with a perpendicular direction, and you have lift, you already have thrust, we talked about that offsetting a little bit, and then minus that weight, the weight uh, cosine theta. And then that's the into the perpendicular direction. And so I'm gonna take this top equation and multiply by velocity, and we're gonna start framing the, the right-hand side more in terms of uh, power. And then at the same time, I'm gonna leave the drag on the left-hand side, uh, but then I'm gonna pull the weight over to the right as well. And so that then becomes thrust cosine, that angle of attack and any other angle. And then there's the drag and extra drag. That's all multiplied by velocity. And then uh, kind of splitting this up in inserting into a chain rule, right? We then have weight on both sides, and then you pick V sine theta, and then you've got that time rate of change of velocity squared over 2G, right? And so if I, if I chain roll that out, you would get the extra velocity then showing up, okay? So a couple different things. One, this is actually the rate of change of altitude with respect to time, V sine theta. So that's helpful, right? And so really this whole side here can pick up weight, time rate of change, and then hopefully you see where this is going is that's then just h plus v squared over 2g. And really that's, uh, you, could, you could see that as power. It's kind of that potential energy and the kinetic energy. And what's the change of that, right? And so that's super useful. A lot of times that's just, you know, we just call that the power, change in power, right? 
And then uh, all of this, though, is also the, th the thrust as well as the, uh, the weight of the vehicle, uh, of course, is changing. And so you also have, you know, we insert this nomenclature here as well. The thrust is alpha times the sea level, and the weight is beta times the takeoff weight. Um, and the problem is it's, it's everybody's favorite Greek letters. So even in this section, maybe next time I may be using alpha and beta to mean something else. I'll, I'll try to be explicit when we're doing that. Okay. And so then uh, the last couple steps on this is we'll then take a look at lift. And lift is that dynamic pressure. And there's a lift coefficient times the, the S is the area of the wings. Okay? And then drag, same sort of thing, Q, C, drag. S, and of course, I'll have a, an equivalent for the other drag. We'll just say that's Q, C, the R, S. Yeah. But the drag, total drag coefficient, right, it, it's a couple different things. So, so when, you're, when your angle of attack pulls up, you actually generate vortices off of that wing. And so you, you have a, you know, extra drag that shows up because of uh, you pulling up strongly. And so the, the fairly standard way to you know, kind of curve fit. So whether you're you're doing wind tunnel experiments or maybe you're doing you know CFDs come a long way now, but you would really curve that the drag to have a, a kind of quadratic fit. And so lift coefficient squares times k1, and then a linear times lift coefficient, and then you'd have CD, and we call it CD zero. That's lift. All right. And so. Uh, this this form is then actually helpful because we can then you know do drag plus extra drag and pick out a couple different forms and so you know kind of running out of room here but we'll, we'll just try to complete this drag plus extra drag right and then that's the dynamic pressure times the wings and then you have now filling this in k1 but then lift coefficient come up here and then use our, our formulas on the side is equal to n beta because that's the weight and then over q and that's because this is the takeoff weight rid of the wing squared and then k2 in beta over Q, weight takeoff over S, plus that CD zero. Okay. And then if you go through and you, and you flush this through, right, we actually have S and S here. And so you, you can get this into the final form. I'll just write it down here, and then we can kind of talk about it up top. And so in its final form, you can have that the to take off thrust to take off weight of the system is the weight and then the kind of the thrust lapse rate, that's what alpha represents, times K1 N squared beta, and N being how many Gs you want to pull. And, and it's usually more pertinent in a turn, and that's where uh, that turning curve comes from, and over Q. And then you have takeoff weight to wing area plus K2, whatever that linear term is, times N. And then CD0 and CDR0 over beta over Q. And then there's again the, the, the wing loading plus the power setting over V. So uh, because I skipped a bunch of steps, you can either go through yourself, you can look up this derivation online, but but where I started off with is looking at kind of the parallel and perpendicular components, uh, getting this more into a power form so we can see how this relates to any change in kinetic energy or potential energy, filling in lift and drag with a set of coefficients. The drag then is it usually picks up this, this quadratic form with lift because of the penalty of, you know, when you're pulling up, you create more drag because you're actually shedding these vortices behind you. And then working that through, and what I want to just highlight and I'll circle here in red, this is thrust to weight, okay? And so you have this term here, and so it's linear in this term, and then one over on that term, all right? 
And so that's how you have end up having these curves. So the and then, you know, depending if you're climbing, you're accelerating, you're, you're turning, that's how you get these these terms. It's, it's not just a straight line along thrust loading to the wing loading. Right, you, you end up having these these curves that you, you can't go below if you don't have enough thrust. And so this is this is sort of where it starts with vehicle design. And so on the, the next segment, I'm actually gonna then go in and realize that, you know, I'll highlight here, oh, this is all fine and well, except a couple of different things that we haven't specified, right? And so one is that, well, especially in a hypersonic vehicle, you may have a lot of weight that you're carrying, you're, get, you're getting lighter at all times. So what is the beta? Again, back to the beta is just how much lighter your aircraft is getting. So what beta are you trying to design this at? Alpha is by no means constant when you're doing with, you know, hyper, supersonic, hypersonic aircraft. Like this might be fairly constant for a, a general aviation propeller that I'm gonna you know, use this engine horsepower, but th th this is not constant by any means. And then we have this dynamic pressure, which from, from last time we, we know dynamic pressure is set by your altitude and speed. And we've talked through, well, that's really set by temperature. So, so what Q are you then solving this for? And we, we could figure out, N is just, you know, how quickly you want your radius cur curvature. So if you're designing a fighter jet, it might be, you might want to be able to do a 9G turn to kind of, you know, turn quickly, but a, a aircraft usually might be just two or three. This is plenty for kind of a turning rate. Uh, and then, you know, climbing rate. We can we can estimate what's a good climbing rate, but maybe, maybe that's a really big deal. And so we need a little bit more here than just this sort of simple framework, as you hopefully can see, and we'll get into that next time, because this is part of what makes hypersonic vehicles uh, significantly more challenging than just a, a standard vehicle to go design through and, and choose. So we'll see you next time.